It is a great privilege to welcome you to the 1916 Relatives Association Annual Commemoration Ceremony. Now, traditionally, this event is held in the Garden of Remembrance, but unfortunately, it has been cancelled like so many other events this year. So, instead, we will honour and remember our relatives from the safety of our own homes. And this is the plan. So, united in spirit, very soon we will all light a candle. We will have a moment of quiet contemplation and we will think about our relatives and the sacrifice they made for our country. Just think of the courage and vision displayed during Easter week, 1916. It is now time to light the candle. Anish, Lossagi Vorginla, a Givna Lekra, Najerg as a Shajerg. Gurmahagav. Good afternoon and happy Easter from a relatively quiet Christchurch junction today, happily. Unlike in 1916 during the Rebellion Week when it was a very, very busy junction. Not so much because what was happening north of the arch of Christchurch Cathedral and the Green Dome, as you can see just north of it, of the Church of Adam and Eve, and also to its right, the scaffolded forecourt. We know how busy they were in 1916 and its aftermath. But also, just one mile to the west is Victoria Barracks, then Collins Barracks, and now the National Museum of Ireland. And a mile and a half to the south of us is Porto Bella Barracks, now called Carl Brewer Barracks. And from those two barracks came replenishments for the oppressor against our rebellious soldiers in 1916. So this was a very, very busy junction. Kinmainham Jail is five or seven minutes walk that direction and Dublin Castle is about 200 yards in that direction. This is a rebel song I'm going to sing whose author is unknown. And it's a song not as much as those who bravely fought and died, but also because of the families and the suffering they had to endure as those who were left behind. The Dying Rebel. The night was dark and the fight was over. The moon shone down O'Connell Street. I stood alone where brave men carried. 
those men have gone there got me the first I met was a dying lover bending low I heard him cry God bless my home in dear Cork City God bless the cause for which I die. My only son was shot in Dublin, fighting for his country born. He fought for Ireland and Ireland's glory. The harp and shamrock, green, white and gold. The next I met was a grey-haired father Searching for his only son I said, my man, there is no use searching For up to heaven your son has come the old man cried, I'm broken hearted. Bending on, I heard him say, I knew my son was too kind hearted. I knew my son would never yield. My only son was shot in. Fighting for his country born, he fought for Ireland and Ireland's glory. The harp, the shamrock, green, white, and Hoblach Naharan, Provisional Government of the Irish Republic, to the people of Ireland, Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations from which she receives her old tradition of nationhood, Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organised and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organisation, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open military organisations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army, having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself, she now seizes that moment and, supported by her exiled children in America and by gallant allies in Europe, but relying in the first on her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished the right, nor can it ever be extinguished except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. Six times during the past 300 years, they have asserted it in arms. Standing on that fundamental right and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world, we hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign, independent state. And we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare and of its exaltation amongst the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to and hereby claims the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation, of all its parts, cherishing all the children of the nation equally and oblivious of the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided a minority from the majority in the past. 
We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessing we invoke upon our arms, and we pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonour it by cowardice, inhumanity or rapine. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must, by its valour and discipline, and by the readiness of its children to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august destiny to which it is called. Signed on behalf of the Provisional Government, Thomas J. Clark, Sean McDermott, Thomas McDonough, P. H. Pierce, Eamon Kent, James Connolly, Joseph Plunkett. Hi folks, Hazel Chu here, your Lord Mayor of Dublin City. I'm delighted today to record this video for the 1916 Relatives uh, Association. They have been great friends here of the Mansion House and uh, us to them. And each year, the Lord Mayor will lay a wreath in commemoration of those who tragically died and gave their lives with the, uh, with the, uh, in the Rising. And I'm really quite sad that we can't do it this year. It's been a uh, challenging, to say the least, year with COVID this year and there's been so many things that we've had to change and it's been difficult for so many with the loss um, of lives, of jobs, of our homes and I hope you're all holding on well and together we can come through this and I hope those abroad watching us um, also thank and welcome uh, to, to the event but also that you're holding strong as well. And on that note, I'd like to thank the 1916 Relatives Association for doing this, because in these uncertain times and unprecedented times, it's really important to have these connections. And it's really important that we still have that community that celebrates our history, that understands that so many lives were sacrificed during 1916 to get us to this point. Uh, again, uh, I'm sorry that I can't be there to lay the wreath myself and hopefully next year the next Lord Mayor will be able to and will continue to follow in those footsteps of Kathleen Clark, uh, once seen as a rebellious woman but I just see her as a hero and a legend and so many during that period that lay the f foundations of what our society is today and again a massive thank you to the 1916 Relatives Association and to all those involved in it. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all in person one day. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Our country, to it, after God, is due our sovereign allegiance. To it, after God, we are indebted to all things. Time, labour, wealth, family, all must be lost sight of when our country demands the sacrifice. Percy Reynolds, Frongok, 1916 Orosha the Vahawalia was a rallying call for Irish nationalism for almost 300 years and it was sung as a marching tune by the volunteers during Easter week 1916. 
the song itself was liked by Patrick Pierce. It's a 16th century song which features Bonnie Prince Charlie. But Patrick Pierce preferred the idea of Grace O'Malley, the legendary queen whose exploits in the 16th century, whose rebellious exploits were legendary. He felt that Grace O'Malley was a more fitting symbol of Irish defiance and rebelliousness of 1916. And in this rewritten version of Orosha de Vahal Walia by Padraig Pearce in 1914, he talks about welcoming back the spirit of Grania Whale. The spirit of Grania Whale as a symbol of Irish defiance and rebelliousness in 1916. Orosha de Vahal Walia. And if the volunteers could sing it, some of them couldn't sing, that didn't stop them. And I'm asking you to sing the chorus as well, especially if you think you cannot sing. Oh, All together. We are very close to the end of our ceremony and before we go I would like to thank everyone who took part in today's event. I would like to thank the Lord Mayor of Dublin, Hazel Chu, for the kind words and greetings that she sent us today. Special thanks go to our wonderful singer, Noel O'Grady, and to our melodious musician, Kriva Shoiga Nimoini. Mila Buyakustan Berta. We are very grateful to our filmmaker, Marcus Howard, Easter Rising Stories, and I would like to thank him for all his work on our project. Most of all, I want to thank you, the relatives, who have taken part in today's ceremony. Your participation was vital. Remember, the memory of our ancestors lives on through you. Tashina Manish Tadera on Clor, Gurd Mila Mahagif Oswar Gurluder, Quick No Mead, La Auron the Veen. We will now sing the national anthem. Gurd Mila Mahagif of his good day of Slam. Shirna Fiala Fall, Atal.